shooting a bow and arrow is, it's not really an aiming sort of experience. It's, it's the confidence of knowing it's where we want the arrow to go without really aiming. So between an archer and their equipment, there's this teamwork that goes on and there's sort of a confidence that you build up in your bow. So for me, when I pick up a bow where I see one of my bows, it's, it brings me right back to, you know, the tree. Where was the tree growing? What was this tree doing? And just this process, you know, we've been on this journey together for, you know, a few years now. So when I pick up that bow, there's a connection. Our area here, we're called the Upper Sunshine Coast, um, landlocked on the mainland. And, you know, we're relatively wild. We've got a lot of forest around us, a lot of logging. We have the first paper mill on the coast, so a lot of our area was cut pretty hard to feed the paper mill. So, it all started one day walking in the forest, and I found a yew tree that had been just schmucked by a big fur that came down in a windstorm. I just came around the corner and stopped, and said, there it is. So I, you know, cut, cut it down and bought a book called Traditional Boyer's Bible and basically just started fooling around and playing and trying to figure this, yeah, figure this process out. My wife, Jenna, is a huge part of what we do. Um, I would say she's also probably responsible for what we do because when we started, I got bit pretty hard by this bow making bug and she started teasing me once all the bows added up in all the corners and finally she asked me, do you have a plan for these bows? Are you just gonna, can't just keep building them indefinitely? So when I started, I want to say there's not, I didn't have a specific goal in mind, you know, um, especially with the bows. It started so innocently, you know, I just wanted to build myself a bow. That's where it started. And then I built one and said, oh, wow, I really enjoyed that, but I could do better. So the bows that we're building are totally natural creations. You know, there are pieces of Pacific yew wood grown here on the West Coast that are split and worked down. Our focus is the natural material, you know, trying to take a, just a piece of nature and refine it. The style that we've fallen into is the English longbow. This is what England put all of their eggs into. This is, this is what it was. They raised a culture of archers for hundreds of years. You know, mandatory by law for every man to own a bow, to own arrows, and to practice. You could go to jail, you could get fined for not practicing archery enough. The bow making process for me, you know, it starts right in the forest with our Pacific yew wood and walking through the forest and looking at all the different yew trees and use naturally a scrubby, gnarly, twisted species and it's sort of the rarity when we get those nice long straight ones. At this point they're called staves, so a stave is a piece of wood with bow potential in it. Bring them into the shop, um, first thing we do is take the bark off. So we want to take the bark off and just get a nice look at the sapwood. From there, we'll lay them out. So draw and measure and sort of draw out the shape of a bow. And then we rough them out. The thing with bows is we can't handle weak spots and we can't handle stiff spots. We need to disperse our stress as even as we can throughout this whole piece. And that's how you're gonna get long lasting durable bows because nothing is being stressed further than its sort of working limits. So the horns we put on, and that's a throwback right to the days of the English longbow. And basically it's a way of getting the string off of the wood. 
we make these bows beautiful and slender and sleek and everything. But then we really stress them to like within an inch of their life and we're bending them to sort of right out to their bending limits. It's a balance between they're beautiful, but we also really push them in a way that I don't think a lot of other woodworkers stress wood to that sort of extent. My wife, Jenna, she does um, a lot of, I want to say the finishing parts. She builds all the strings, serves all the strings, um, does all the leather handles, and she also does all the wood burning, which is a, yeah, a real beautiful art that she does on her own. We name all our bows, you know, I name some, she names some. We have a running joke that I say she's going to run out of names and she says I'm going to run out of wood. The bows are amazing because they're all natural. So you're just picking up, you know, pieces of the forest that have come together. So I always joke, you know, this is Robin Hood's bow. Like this is Robin Hood and the Merry Men. If he was still alive, I think he would be shooting one of my bows right now. People always joke about, oh, an artist and you're building these beautiful bows. And in the back of my mind, there's always like, I'm sort of a tool maker who's building weapons. Our craft is interesting because we're trying to recreate what they were doing in England 800 years ago, you know? That's really what we're, we're after. And I don't know what the bow shops would have looked like back then. Would the bow maker have been seen as this artistic creator? Or would he have been, you know, just the tool maker? Mm -hmm.